Well, good Monday morning. This is your friend and pastor, Charles Hayton, with another Lord Light's devotional. And again, I am delighted that you've chosen to spend a few minutes with us. We're coming down to the end of three years of trying to uh, instruct and uh, inspire and encourage people. And I hope that with all the different uh, devotionals that we've uh, pasted on Facebook and posted on YouTube, uh, have been a blessing to somebody in some way. But I just want to share with you today that Jesus Christ, the greatest man that ever lived, certainly we know that as the divine son of God, he was great in that respect, but he was great in the life that he lived while he was here on the face of this earth. The Bible says that he went about doing good. And indeed that comprised his life just everywhere he went reaching out to the needs of others in such a selfish, uh, unselfish way. But you know, he had his critics. Kind of surprised that anybody would criticize the Son of God, one that did so much good to others. But in reading from the ninth chapter of Matthew, I find two different incidents where he was criticized. Once he was criticized for uh, healing a man that was brought sick of the palsy. They accused him of blasphemy. And then he went and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom and, and he said, follow me. And when Matthew got up and followed him, that he went home to eat in his house and the publicans and the sinners came down and sat with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, why, why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? There's another criticism. You know, I found out that the critics are many. Regardless of who you are, regardless of what you may be doing, there are always going to be critics. If Christ had his critics, we can expect to be criticized in what we attempt to do. I was reading an article one time about a, a preacher that I admire greatly, a preacher that had been very successful in building a great church. And I was somewhat surprised when I read about all the people that were critical of his ministry, a good godly minister and, and a good ministry, and yet he had his critics. And you know, I think that uh, we can find that the critics are many today. And I find that the critics are kind of like peas in a pod. They all look alike. They all smell alike. They all have the same purpose, and that is just to find fault with whatever good is going on. And you know, I see people that seem to live their life just finding fault with everything and everybody. And the truth of the matter is that their life is probably faultier, if that's a word, or more faulty. I'm not a master of English here, so I don't know how to say it. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that their life is probably worse than the one that they're trying to criticize. And so I think that we need to recognize today that regardless of our uh, position in life, regardless of what ministry we're trying to carry on with, regardless of what good we're trying to accomplish. It's not just the ministers that have their critics. It's good lay people that are trying to do good and do what they can for the kingdom of God. They're going to have those that were criticized. Somebody told me a long time ago that if somebody, I believe it was Brother Omar Lee in one of our homiletics classes, that if somebody criticizes your sermon, what they're really saying is, I could do a better job than you are. If somebody criticizes what you may do, they're trying to say, I could do better than what you're doing. And so, you know, the truth of the matter is, they probably couldn't. They're just being critical. I don't want to be all starting the week on a sour note today, but I want to tell you this, that the reason I've done this little talk on, on the critics is that as we observe those that are critical of what goes on, those that find fault with everything and everybody, this purpose in our heart that we're not going to be that way. You see, sometimes I have a tendency to be a little bit critical, and I want God to save me from such a spirit. I want God to protect me from saying that I can do it better than somebody else or I am better than somebody else. I do not want a critical spirit. And so I pray that God will help us through this little talk considering that there will always be critics, that uh, one good thing they will do is to inspire us not to be critical. 
And if that critic out there is inspiring me to not be like they are, well, I thank God for them. They're a bad example, but uh, they're serving as an example of what we should not be. So little scattered remarks here, but go out and don't be like the critic. Build people up, encourage them, say something good about what they are doing. And uh, God will bless and reward you for being a, a booster and not a critic. Heavenly Father, don't let any of us develop a critical spirit. Help us, dear Lord, to recognize that we are to, to bear one another up in prayer and we support one another in love. And Lord, we just pray that thou will keep us from becoming as so many people in the world today, finding fault with everything that goes on. Bless us throughout another Monday. Keep your hand upon us. And truly, Lord, for the blessing that is ours, we'll give you the praise. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for letting me share, and I'll see you tomorrow on Lord Light's Devotional. Goodbye now.